Welcome back. As we announced earlier, we are very honored tonight with the presence of Dr. Dharar Lishab, his consultant in thoracic surgery from Chest Hospital and the second Kuwaiti surgeon in Kuwait in that specialty. Welcome to our program, uh, Dr. Dharar, and we are very honored with your presence. Thank you very much, Dr. Rada, and uh, the honor is mine, actually. I'm so pleased that I'm here to try to share some information with, uh, with everybody. Thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, dear viewers, the other privilege that we have that for the first time Dr. Dharal is uh, shown on TV going to discuss with us uh, those important topics, hoping that to be part of our team and we'll discuss in the future other topics are of interest to everybody. So uh, Dr. Dharal, um, I did announce that uh, you are a consultant in thoracic surgery specialized in this field. We know that uh, surgery by itself is a challenge for any doctor and to be a thoracic surgeon, and we know this is a rare specialty in Kuwait, right. and I know you are so down to earth and humbled not mentioning that, but we need to mention that for our viewers, this is the least to be done for our colleagues, that uh, we have only two doctors uh, in Kuwait specialized in the field. That's correct. Usually yeah. in the beginning, I always say for those who don't know uh, Dr. Darar, uh, please um, give us a brief history. Who is Dr. Darar Lishab? and uh, give us a brief history about your specialty, where's your current job, and why you are interested in thoracic surgery itself. Well, um, first of all, I graduated from uh, the Kuwait University Medical School, um, um, and then I decided to uh, go abroad uh, to Canada. I was so uh, lucky to go there, actually. Uh, so I finished my uh, general surgery uh, board uh, program, um, and then I decided to join thoracic surgery. That was my first plan, actually. Uh, the reason is why, you ask me why thoracic surgery, well, I have three small reasons. First of all, it's a challenging uh, subspeciality. And um, second of all, um, I've always been fascinated with, with, uh, uh, with the lungs and, and the mechanics of the lungs and the anatomy of the chest cavity. For our luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, third of all, um, which is I think most important, is the need that uh, uh, the, the, my country needs um, uh, that subspeciality because uh, as you mentioned, thank you very much that I'm the second one. Um, uh, and the first one is actually my mentor, uh, Dr. Adil. Yes, uh, we greet him also through this program. We hope also to see him also as a, uh, a guest in our program. Now, Dr. Darar, uh, we chose tonight uh, two topics, very important, and we did announce earlier on a week ago, so our viewers have a chance to uh, send us the questions regarding this uh, topic. Mm -hmm. We are going tonight to talk about lung cancer, and hopefully if the time allows to finish with it, the new motors. If not, we will arrange uh, <coughs> Sorry for another episode. Starting with uh, lung cancer. Why do you think it was important to talk about lung cancer tonight as a first topic? Well, um, first of all, any cancer is important to everybody here. And lung cancer, it's so important because um, uh, the statistics are really, really uh, <coughs> uh, it's terrifying. Uh, first of all, as I say, that um, uh, lung cancer is the leading cause of death now among diseases. And it's the second most common um, uh, cancer uh, among uh, uh, female after breast cancer and, and uh, among males. Uh, it's actually the first cause. And it's so common because the, the causes are common, uh, especially here in Kuwait, uh, which is number one is smoking. So do you think, uh, Dr. Dharar, because of the uh, increasing number of people smoking cigarettes now, this ranking of a cause of the lung cancer has changed over the last 20 years? The, yeah, absolutely correct. That's correct. I mean, people are smoke more and then the cancer um, uh, rates and, and uh, cancer numbers are getting higher. Um, uh, it used to be only for males, like it's a disease of males, and then rarely females, they get it, the women get it. But uh, because of the smoking habits that established more than 20 years ago, uh, or even more, uh, more female or more women that are getting more uh, uh, lung cancer nowadays. Yes, I do agree with you. We do refer many cases, uh, like you said, because there's a growing number, unfortunately, for females also to smoke cigarettes. And like you said, sometimes it takes years before this shows. And now we are living the time where you see such cases, unfortunately. That's correct. Now, uh, this is just uh, simple or uh, simple facts mentioned regarding the importance of lung cancer as a topic. 
But, and you did mention a very important cause that the fa factor that plays a role is smoking. Is there other uh, theories or causes that play a role of causing lung cancer? There are many causes of lung cancer, um, uh, but you know, it leads them is number one is the cause is the smoking basically, and um, the other causes um, uh, uh, the other causes we can mention is is uh, for example uh, pollution, uh, air pollution. Uh, uh, smoking number two uh, number three is um, uh, is sometimes it's inherited uh, among families a genetic uh, uh, mal malformation of, of genes basically and mutation in genes and a few more causes like you know diet lifestyle uh, and and there is a gas which is I'm not, I don't think it's common here but uh, it's called radon gas. Yeah, this is uh, mainly outside the uh, quite mainly, other yes. factories. Yeah, uh, yeah. But again, I come back and say smoking is number one yes. uh, uh, cause of, of lung cancer. Yeah, and this is uh, the message we want to emphasize tonight. We don't want to fright, but see how important that smoking can be of a great effect on the health of any person causing to the extent of lung cancer and being number one as a cause for right. that. Right. Let's go further to um, have more uh, thorough discussion regarding lung cancer and how it presents. Um, let's say general symptoms, how would a patient uh, with lung cancer present age-wise, uh, general health, if, if there are general symptoms that are non-specific or there is something specific to lung cancer? Uh, sure, lung cancer is a disease uh, that affects um, uh, both males and females, but uh, men are more prone to have lung cancer. Um, uh, the the uh, the other uh, the presentations of, of lung cancer uh, uh, is it can present in any 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 type or any way, uh, but mainly they present with cough, um, either coughing uh, dry cough or coughing uh, coughing up some blood with with the, with the sputum, uh, chest pain, uh, weight loss. Um, uh, this is primary um, uh, affecting the lungs and there are non-respiratory system uh, uh, symptoms um, which is for example weight loss as I said, uh, bone pains, headaches yes. and new changes in, in, in uh, central nervous system. So loss of appetite and loss of weight like you said non-respiratory uh, system or symptoms is of, applies to any uh, tumor or cancer in the body Th that's like you right. mentioned. That's yes. correct. And it usually affects uh, the age group between 40 and 70 years uh, of, of, uh, of age. And uh, do you see young uh, patients here in Kuwait, like uh, say uh, a person, a lady with, or a man with the age of 40 or 45 diagnosed with lung cancer, do we have that at, at that early age? We, ha we do have that actually. And this is unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, it is unfortunate. Uh, um, uh, either they have been a smoker or, or they've been a passive smoker, which is called the secondhand smoking. Yes. But overall, worldwide, um, uh, um, it's less than 2% uh, uh, cancer present, lung cancer present younger than 40 years of age. Yes, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure this number will be uh, more because you know, uh, Dr. Dra, we've been discussing this also before that uh, unfortunately more younger people, teenagers and even children are starting to smoke at a very early age. So I'm sure this will have a great effect and m might uh, present, patient present maybe in 30s or early 40s like you said and the percentage will be increasing as well. That, that's absolutely correct and um, uh, what I hope that one day people realize that uh, uh, smoking will not affect you now but it will affect you 20 years from smoking. And, um, and I hope they, they should uh, you know, uh, look uh, really seriously uh, to stop smoking as soon as possible. Now, uh, we mentioned generally all the symptoms, but is there one alarming sign or symptoms that the patient should put in uh, his or her mind to remember from our episode when she or he has it, he have to consult a doctor? Well, actually, there are two symptoms that I really, um, I really encourage people, if they have it, they should really seek help as soon as possible. Number one is if you have cough or chest infection that's not resolving uh, after uh, visiting the doctors and after having um, antibiotics for more than two courses, one or two courses, you should uh, seek help and you should see the, uh, your doctor as soon as possible. Now the other alarming uh, symptom is when you start to cough up a little bit of blood with the sputum, then for us as a, as a physician, is really a red flag. 
we have to investigate this as soon as possible and we have to rule out uh, cancer as soon as possible. Yes, uh, and actually I do agree with you, Dr. Darar. Usually when the patients do cough, uh, uh, do have a cough with the sputum uh, uh, mixed with blood, that makes them or push them to go and consult the doctor. That's really an alarming sign for everybody. That's correct. Now, let's say we have a suspicion of a patient with lung cancer and uh, now a, a doctor or a colleague have referred that patient to be assessed further with their starting it in the primary care or the secondary care. What are the steps that patient goes through to be uh, confirmed with the diagnosis of ca lung cancer? Well, um, if we suspect that patient has, has a, a lung cancer or serious disease, then we start our uh, investigation by taking a proper history and, and uh, physical examination. And, uh, Which is routinely done for all cases absolutely. when you're really presenting with any problem. Absolutely. It's so important not only to diagnose the patient, it's so important to, to establish a, a repertoire or to establish yes. a relationship between the patient and, and, and to um, uh, discover the social aspects of the patient's life because this will affect the, uh, affect the, the, the treatment and affect the uh, even outcome of the treatment. 